So this is the man, the legend, Manfred von Richthofen, the Red Baron. But he wasn't even called that in his own lifetime. In fact, there's a lot of things that most people don't even know about him. When most people think of the Red Baron, they think of this, the classic red triplane, the Fokker DR-1. And this is what he flew when he was with Yasta 11. By the 7th of April, Manfred had shot down 76 aircraft in combat, officially. And around 11.30 in the morning, he engaged and shot down 2nd Lieutenant Albert Vernon Galley, who was flying with 73 Squadron, and he was shot down in a Sopworth Camel D6550. Half an hour later, it's believed that he shot down a squad mate of Vernon Galley, Lieutenant Ronald George Hinnings Adams, who's flying a Sopworth Camel with D655 as his serial number. This put the Red Baron at 78 kills, the highest number in the war to date. 13 days later, around 6.40 in the evening, he engaged with Major Richard Raymond Barker, MC, from number 3 squadron, and shot him down, killing him. Just three minutes later, he was engaging with another aircraft from number three squadron, flown by David Greswold Lewis, who he also shot down, making his final score 80 aerial kills officially. Manfred's mother had been pleading for him to come home on leave, and he was due to go home in just 24 hours. Then he decided to fly one final sortie on the morning of the 21st of April 1918. Seeing a camel flown by Wilfred May fire upon his cousin Leuton Wolfram von Rechthofen, Manfred gives chase. He's low and he's far behind enemy lines. This is something he's told his pilots time and time again never to do. Seeing his old school friend being attacked by the red triplane, Captain Roy Brown gives chase and dives very steeply to try and intercept the German. Manfred sees this and easily evades, but he's caught in the crosshairs of some Australian ground units and receives a fatal wound to the heart. Despite being very close to death, the Red Baron manages to land his aircraft, but when the nearest soldiers arrive to see what's happened, he's dead. And the reason that we know that Manfred was alive when he landed the aircraft is because the triplane was notoriously difficult to land, so it's unlikely that he, it would have landed itself. But that is where the story ends. How did the story start? How was this legend born? For that story, we start with a very bored cavalry officer who joins the German Air Force. Everyone that's interested in military aviation knows the Red Baron, and they know that he achieved the highest score in World War I of 80 aerial kills. What they don't know is he actually shot down more aircraft than that. 
So let's talk about where the story begins. This is the Red Baron before he became red. He's flying as an observer in a German two-seater and they've just come across a French aircraft, probably a farman. Using the primitive armament, Manfred engages with the French aircraft and scores hits. The aircraft is clearly damaged and later on they see it crash. But it crashes behind enemy lines so no evidence of the crash can be found and Manfred is not given official credit for that kill. The reason why Manfred became an observer in 1915 is because he was desperate to see action and the quickest way to do that was to take a one month course to become an observer. But his plans changed with a chance encounter with a, one of the famous pilots at the time, Oswald Bolker. During the chance meeting on the train, Manfred asks Bolker, how do you do what you do? Bolker replies that it's quite simple. All I do is fly close to my man, aim well, and of course he falls down. Manfred concludes that it's not as easy to do this in his large two-seater as it would be in a single-seat Fokker. So he applies for pilot training. Posted to the front in France, Manfred is now a pilot in a two-seater and he engages with a French Newport. Manfred scores hits on the French aircraft and forces it down. Again, the Red Baron is not given official credit for that kill. Through another chance meeting with Oswald Borker during Manfred's posting to the Russian front, he is recruited into Yasta 2, which is a specially organised fighter squadron, the first of its kind. Von Richthofen has been flying for several months, has not yet got an accredited kill. His luck is about to change. 
On the morning of the 17th of September 1916, von Richthofen is flying with Yasta II when they come across a formation of 11 squadron aircraft flying FE2Bs. Russell Bulk gives a signal to attack and releases his fledgling aircraft while he sits back to observe. Von Richthofen dives to attack, signaling out one of the FE2Bs. Due to his inexperience, he allows himself to be targeted by the observer. He presses an attack as he's been taught to by the Dick de Bolka. And he follows down the wounded FE2B to the ground. Possibly because his previous claims haven't been credited to him. He wants to get direct confirmation that he's actually got the first kill. He decides to land next to the wreckage and get a souvenir, something that he will do time and time again. His victims are pilot, second lieutenant Lionel Morris and captain Tom Reese. As he lands and looks at the wounded observer, captain Reese gives him a weak smile before dying. Second Lieutenant Morris never regains consciousness and dies at hospital later that day. These men will become infamous as the first victims of the Red Baron. And no fewer than 79 more aircraft will fall in the coming months. Although von Richthofen does fall on the 21st of April, 1918, the end actually comes earlier. While attacking a similar aircraft to the one he first shot down, he misjudges the attack. And a stray round grazes his skull. This wound will change Germany's top fighter pilot forever and may explain why he was low, slow, and far behind the enemy lines, chasing Wilfred May. <laughs>